Get started, guys. Uh, Yvonne, over to you. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Um, I guess everyone is running a bit late. I know that there's like a bunch of different um, sports events taking place today, I was told today. Um, so I don't know if our people are sports people, they might not be making it. But I think this is an amazing session and I'm sorry that some people will miss it. The great thing is we do record our sessions and so they'll have an opportunity to, to, to revert back to it. Um, this evening we have Richard Wright, who um, for those who've read his bio is an entrepreneur, um, an investment, uh, should I say guru? <laughs> Um, but uh, he is in one of the um, industry that we're very, very um, passionate about, which is uh, ownership, uh, land ownership, real estate ownership. And uh, he's going to talk to us today about um, his business, what he does, uh, he and his team, what they do in terms of um ownership in uh, owning property and investment properties in the U.S. and also here in Canada. So, um, Mr. Wright, I will take it over to you to introduce yourself further, and it's all yours. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I wish I had some faces to see while I'm speaking. I'm just looking at a black screen. <laughs> there, you got one. <laughs> But um, yes, I'm, I'm actually out in the field right now. I'm actually in um, Cleveland, Ohio right now um, at a session um, with uh, people from all over America. They come to me um, as an investment opportunity um, here in Cleveland. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, there's a little bit of an echo, but um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so they come out here um, tapping into a network of uh, like-minded individuals because Cleveland has a great rental market um, and it's a place that we've been investing into <clears throat> since 2018. Um, initially, uh, we started coming to America for investments because uh, we felt that Canada no longer served our best interests when it came to um, wealth creation and preservation. Um, and I initially started doing um, the investments with my two friends, um, partnering with them. And the reason why, because I wanted to build wealth for my family. Eventually, it grew into a community of like-minded individuals where we shared the opportunities with others. Um, I'll give an example. Um, in Gary, Indiana, another place that we invest, um, we were buying homes um, tax lien auctions for $500. Um, one of the properties that we purchased was a parcel of land. Um, it was just under an acre. Uh, we purchased it for $500. Um, we held that property for about two years. Um, and we just, uh, we sold it for 35 for the opportunities that were presented to us and that we've been doing. We've been doing, um, real estate, buying holds, flipping, uh, birds. Uh, and in this process, we learned um, how us as Canadians um, can get into uh, our banking over here, um, establish our own personal credit, business credit, and lines of credit as well, which uh, obviously helped grow the portfolio as well. Um, we try to, again, present these things to people in our community mostly because, again, you know, the wealth yeah, but in our community is quite large and we want to see more of our people um, in positions to help more of our people. We want to see our community grow. Also, the communities that we invest in and we find these opportunities are also people that look like us. So it's a win-win on both sides. Uh, we're coming in as people that look like them as investors and we're going to communities and lifting up communities of people that look like us as well too. Otherwise, communities that um, people from the outside probably wouldn't look at or be interested in. Um, and this is why it's such a great opportunity. Now, um, 
Cleveland has been on the list for the last few years, uh, like Forbes magazine, um, Realtors magazine, um, up and run multiple times. Um, before it was a little hidden gem, but Cleveland now, the cat is out the bag, a lot of people are going. Um, I've realized in the last year that it's um, a big trend now in Canada for uh, people advertising about Cleveland specifically and investing in the U.S. is now becoming a new trend. Now the Canadian real estate, um, Canadian real estate market has turned. Um, because of that, now um, we find a lot of people, you know, reaching out and saying, you know, come and invest in the U.S. And again, this is something that we've been doing over this side um, since 2018 um, and myself since about 2015. Um, the present, what we present to people basically is um, the opportunity um, is to learn the same strategy on multiple books over the years. Um, we will believe in continuing education, the best try to do ourselves and learn as things are ever changing. Because of that, um, like I said, we try to come back and share with our community, and this is why um, we're pre I'm presenting now. Our organization. And principle. And because of what we've been doing, um, and showing to about 300 persons um, overall, um, next month, we are hosting our first um, trip to Cleveland, um, and our trip will entails uh, some of the education. Um, because we do rehabs as well, too. Uh, also, we'll be presenting opportunities for those who don't want to be so much hands-on, um, how they can invest and get returns on top of their money. Um, for our community, again, the wealth has just been so separated um, compared to other communities that we felt that opening this opportunity just to everybody um, would be a disservice for our own. And we decided that we were looking at our own first. Um, as like I said, we are mainly Indians that look like us. Um, clean. Sorry, is that question? Um, no, we'll see someone uh, what we call so the chocolate the city. Apple. Okay, no worries, no worries. Gee, Cleveland is uh, what we like to call a chocolate city. So is Gary, where we invest. We like to call them chocolate cities. I mean, in the people that look just like us, um, we have no problem um, blending in. Getting, again, these are areas where other communities don't feel as comfortable. The majority of the people are people. Black people, um, African people. For years, and this is how we've established um, some of the success that we've had in the real estate. Um, we've grown when it comes to um, establishing the businesses as well too, and um, worked with uh, accountants, um, people that work with the IRS because you know you have to give Uncle Sam his just due. <laughs> you can't go around in taxes. Um, but we also help people to plug into those opportunities as well too and network with the right people so they can get their business situated. Um, recently, um, this just this past New Year, I was supposed to speak in Ghana. Um, the, I didn't get an opportunity to to go. Um, and speak in person, but um, more investors are looking at North America as an opportunity to invest and developing a way, um, we're developing a way where they can do this remotely as well too. So you have people that are back home in the Caribbean, people that are back home in Africa that can also set up businesses, develop um, credit and banking remotely without being in person. So we've developed relationships with companies and people that actually can set these things up for you um, remotely without you having to be physically in person. Um, and these are some of the things that we're helping people with. Um, and it's a great opportunity. And like, again, 
for some of us who um, know how uh, some people struggle in Canada with credit, um, didn't know much about it, you know, got bad credit, uh, haven't been able to fix. It's a fresh start because we are establishing not only um, their new personal credit, but also business credit. Um, I'm a big fan of business credit because through business credit, uh, it's a completely separate from your personal. So when they pull up your credit score um, and they see your personal, your business, anything that comes on your business credit is completely separate. It doesn't affect your personal credit score. So when I'm doing um, a rehab on a real estate property, a lot of times I use my business credit card. I can max it out. Um, and again, you know, sometimes these processes take a few months because I've maxed it out and it's been sitting there for a few months. Typically on your personal credit, this will start to affect your personal credit score negatively. But because it's on my business, it doesn't, and I can maintain my personal score. So if I have to do a refinance or another strategy, um, that's maintained while I'm able to still use funding to do my rehabs. Um, and that's a, a, a big bonus and a plus for some of the things that we're doing. But again, like I said, we are presenting these opportunities for our, our community. I know Pomoja is a great, great organization. Um, you guys have been doing your thing for years. Um, and I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting uh, a few members as well, um, collaborating um, with what you guys are doing, building our own community. And that's the same mindset that we have um, as members of Principal Evolution is helping to build our community, build wealth. Um, and Yvonne, also a personal friend of mine, knows that we're big on not only just building generational wealth, but preserving it as well too. And I don't think we talk about that aspect um, as much either. Um, there is few, a very few to little, or I would say maybe little to no families that I know of that have um, organized these processes where generational wealth is more um, solidified and these positions are done where things are more secure. Um, we don't, we're not very familiar in our community with entities like trusts. We're hearing these things now as they're not trending. So we'll hear them on social media, we hear people talking about them, but we're not very educated on some of these entities. Um, I remember when I opened my first trust, um, I was at uh, Royal Bank and they had a designated um, person who dealt with these type of accounts. Um, and when I was picking his brain while he's trying to pick mine, because he was wondering, you know, this is a young black male, you know, what is it that you know that I don't know? And, you know, he was kind of picking my brain to figure out why are you opening this trust? Or is it, um, are you, is it for, um, are you receiving some kind of inheritance? Um, it's an insurance, and he was asking those type of questions. So while he was picking my brain, I was picking his, and you know, how long have you been in this business? And he said he's been in that position for 25 years. And after stating that he's been working doing this for 25 years, um, doing banking, he said this is the second account, the first account he's opened. So imagine working in that position for 25 years, and you've only opened two trust accounts. And the other one obviously was not a person in our community and they did it for um, uh, family, preserving their wealth in their family. So again, these are entities and um, information that we are trying to bring into our community. Um, uh, sadly enough, we're always last to the table and through education, hopefully we can get ourselves up to speed uh, and put ourselves in position where uh, we're not struggling, um, education is paid for, um, the the GoFundMe's that we see so often, you know, to bury people who died suddenly, things that should be in place and, and situations that should be in place are in place when it comes to our community. Um, the U.S. has definitely opened up a situation for us because, uh, as many of you know, the U.S.A. has always been open for business, always. Um, in my opinion, Canada has always been more or less a monopoly, um, which, you know, a few companies control the majority. And even with the, um, the sub-companies, they're still owned by the larger ones. And, and, and that might not be public knowledge, but 
in most of the situations, that's what it is. That's what the police is when it comes to Canada. And that's why I call it a monopoly more or less because there is not a free and open market like there is in the U.S. With that being said, um, a lot of what we've learned, like I said, about setting up banking, tapping into credit, tapping into funding, um, opens up opportunities, not just for real estate, but for other businesses as well, too. Um, so you can actually use um, those same um, opportunities to fund other projects that you're doing. Um, and because you're doing business, um, they take you a lot more serious. So to give you an example, um, a few years ago, the whole world stopped because of COVID. I decided in the height of COVID that I was going to take a trip to the U.S. Um, at the time, the border was actually closed, and it was public information that the border is closed and the border is only open for essential workers, was the exact word that they used, essential workers only. I decided, you know what, I'm going to take a chance <laughs> and I'm going to go across the border. Um, and, and what's the worst they could do? The worst they could do is deny me and turn me back and send me back home. So when I got to the border, um, this is the first I've ever been at the border. There were no other cars. So it was just mine. All the other vehicles that were at the border were actually transport trucks. So transport was still open for business. You know, um, people, consumers have to have their goods. So all the transport oh, trucks yeah. were still going back and forth. They called me in side to uh, the office and they started to grill me, you know, did I not know that the border is closed? Did I not know, you know, COVID is going on? What am I, what is the necessity? Why do I need to be in America? And I tried to let them know, like, you know, this time I need to be in the country because I have taxes to do and I have some business banking to do and I can't do these things online i need to be in person sorry there's a little feedback there so i let them know you know i need to do these things and i can i can only do them in person i can't do them online and they need to get done so at that time they let me know um essentially that i could tap in and go over what we're doing and they actually looked over all the documentation i prepared myself because i knew that they would probably curl me I prepared myself with all my documentations, um, which was my businesses, um, my real estate and so forth. And they were looking over myself. And the person at the border was a, a brother as well. Um, <laughs> and you'd think he would be a little bit more lenient, but he, he grilled me nonetheless. At the end of grilling me, he said he would still ask his supervisor, but he doubts that I'll be able to come into the country. But he'll ask what his supervisor said. And he walked over to his supervisor, and the supervisor said, yes, he's allowed to come into the country. Not knowing, them not knowing that because I'm a business owner, I'm essential. Um, business is still open and running in America, and it's essential to their economy. So I was allowed to enter into the country at the height of COVID with the border closed, and they still allowed me to cross into the country. So that's um, some of the opportunities I realized by having um, my business, I can do. Um, some of the other things uh, in America is different when it comes to business as well, too. It's a lot easier to tap into banking and funding than it is in Canada. Canada does a lot more assessing, a lot more digging. They ask for a lot more. It's easier, much, much easier. Um, they don't pry as much as, I'm in a, as they do in Canada. Also, um, tax-wise, when you're doing your taxes, they give you a lot more breaks for businesses in America than they do in Canada. Um, that's uh, real estate is what I specialize in. So I'll let you know, real estate, you can actually write off depreciation on the value of your house. They don't do that in Canada. So you can write off the depreciation because, you know, the house is getting older. Obviously, it's not, um, it's being beat up by weather. Um, it's being used for, for all the functions. So the door opening and closing for 30 years, eventually we're going to need a new door. So because of these things, um, you're allowed to write off depreciation. So the write-offs and benefits that you get for taxes as well in America is uh, actually much better than even the Canadian side. Um, the CPA that we use 
Mm-hmm. The accountant that we use as well too helps us with our, our taxes because a lot of the questions we get uh, as far as real estate is, of course, taxes. Um, recently in the news, Canada, all over Canada has changed that, um, I mean, anything over $250,000 in capital gains, um, that taxes to increase at be 55 or 65% now, which is very high because again, if you own an asset or you held it for a long time and you decide to sell it, if you made more than a quarter million, they're going to come and tax you and then taxing you pretty hard. Um, it's not as so much in America. Um, and they have programs here where you can divert some of your taxes here. There's one called 1045 Exchange, I believe, where um, I'll give you an example. If I own a property for $100,000 and it went up to two hundred, dollars and I decided to sell it, I don't have to pay any taxes on that $200,000 as long as I roll proceeds from it into another property. And programs like that help people um, avert taxes. Um, we all know Donald Trump, so he's probably the king of tax aversion, but he does it the legal way. And this is why they can't really be upset with him because what he does, he knows the laws, he knows the rules and uses it to his advantage. So us as uh, Canadians, again, um, tapping into the US, we're trying to do that, bring our people over and to show them the opportunities. And like I said, opened up not only just for us in Canada, but people that are in the Caribbean and Africa can do the same as well too. Um, not a, a lot of countries are open for business like America is. And again, I we've been stressing the fact that using these opportunities to our advantage to help build wealth in our communities is definitely key. Um, our organization, Principal Evolution, that's our mandate of our organization is to help build and create wealth in our Black families, um, uh, African and Caribbean families, and show and help others to grow as well too, not only ourselves, but our community. I was just wondering if anybody had any, I know that was a mouthful, um, if anybody had any questions um, about anything I was speaking on or interested to learn anything about yeah, um, just uh, one quick question from my end. Uh, what is the price mm -hmm. range for properties in Cleveland, roughly? So uh, depending what your strategy is, um, so right now, like let's say you go on the MLS and you're looking for a property, mm -hmm. a single family home, uh, let's say straightforward three bedroom, two bathroom, you're looking about 90000 that's no work to be done to it. That means you can just go in, turn the key. They call that a turnkey. So all you have to do is turn the key. Everything is renovated and done. Um, ninety thousand would be the entry price for a wow. two family. So that would be like a duplex. You're looking roughly one thirty, a hundred and forty thousand for a duplex. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, Osage, no, you have your hand. Chosen. Um, what kind of, kind of what are documentation? Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, you cut out a little bit there. Um, my first question was around books and resources in terms of doing business west side, and then I guess what documentation. So you want to know about the what resources? I'm sorry, it took that again on me. What resources you needed for which one? Um, books or resources in the, the U.S. And then the second part was documentation. Getting your paperwork in order. What does that look like? Um, books. There's not a lot of books that I read for for even Canadians in the U.S. To be honest, most of the books were for people that were in the U.S. Um, I I read a lot. I read a lot of self-development books uh, and then a lot of real estate books. So books like uh, the first one would have been Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, a lot of books on mindset. But um, our knowledge when it came to like building up business, um, banking and so forth was through trial and error. Um, and picking, we've done quite a few courses. I've probably spent um, $50,000 easily and just um, courses and information um, and learning, trying to learn all the knowledge 
um, through different resources. Thanks. You're welcome. Awesome. Uh, Zak Zakia, you have your hand up. Yes, hi everyone. I'm like multitasking. Thank you, Rich, for the overview of your experience. So I have one question that I put in the chat. I wanted to know if you are familiar with the Columbus, Ohio area as well, and what are the differences between like Columbus versus um, Cleveland? I was trying to read your message. A, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I don't have a lot of experience in Columbus. And you would think you would be like comparing like Toronto to Brampton or Hamilton. Um, but uh, I met a gentleman just this weekend uh, who's from Columbus. Um, and he's given me a little bit of a synopsis. He has a, a property in Columbus. And he was saying to me that um, it's a much higher price point than it is in Cleveland. Um, and like I said, I just gave an example. It's a much lower price point um, to enter the market. So it's a little bit easier. Um, and then you're getting the same rent. So rents here on average, a two bedroom, one bathroom on the low end would be about eight fifty a month. And that's US. So you're looking about a thousand dollars Canadian. Um, and then the higher end, like if you were to rent um the same two bedroom or bath, you could probably get up to twelve hundred, twelve fifty a month for on the higher end. But um Depends on the area, but depends on the property and so forth. Um, in my experience, um, I would say um, I stick to certain markets. Um, the, the U.S. is a huge place. It's a huge country, and they outnumber us nominally. A lot of people look at Canada and think it's this great mass country. We're big in land mass, but population-wise, population. yeah, our population is less than California. Right. Mm -hmm. So that gives a huge perspective how much people actually live in the U.S. And that's another reason why um, taking advantage of even the rental market is such a big thing. The price point compared to Toronto, even with the conversion rate, I mean, $90,000 for a single family. And that's now um, when we started. I, I, I was speaking earlier when I started in 2018, that same single family was $20,000. Mm -hmm. And. That was just amazing to me. Um, I'm here this weekend. I've been here since yesterday. I drove here. I drove my personal car. I drove across the border, packed my bag, and I drove to stay at a hotel last night. But um, it's a four and a half hour drive. It's comparable to go to Windsor or Otto, you know, my, minus the border. But, you know, I always go early in the morning. I don't do those long border lines. But you could be here in four and a half to five hours. Sometimes where I'm coming and checking in, I come early in the morning and I'm back by evening um, the same day. And that makes it another attractive reason. It's so close to home. You don't have to get on a plane, buy a book, no. it's a ticket. you know, there's so many reasons why. Um, one of the other major reasons why I like this particular market as well, too, um, is the comparisons of the red states and the blue states. So the Democrats and Republicans. Um, this state uh, is landlord friendly. Um, the landlord tenant laws, as opposed like Toronto, where people can be in your house for a year and a half before you even get in front of a judge. Here, it's up to forty five days max. You can get a tenant out of your house, and you know Buffalo is close to home. The prices in Buffalo aren't bad, but because New York laws are very similar to Toronto, it's not attractive to me. You know, it's harder to get a tenant out if you get a pro problem tenant or those tenants who know the book more than you and try to take advantage, you know, and, and then you end up bleeding. So these are all things that we study, we learn, what markets to enter, um, how to deal with an approach, what are exit strategies, how are we going to sell, are we going to sell on the MLS, are we selling to investors? These are the some of the things that we've learned over the years and invested into knowledge of Thank you. I did, I did have a follow-up question because you were giving us comparable of like the rents, right? Like two bedroom, one washroom, 800 cash flow. So are the multifamily homes, like duplexes popular in C Cleveland? Like, you know, in Toronto, for example, those are very popular now because the land is scarce. So how about in Cleveland? Or is it like, what's a popular rental type? 
duplexes are huge. There's duplexes everywhere. Um, especially in the inner city, there's tons of duplexes. Um, and four units. There's a lot of four units as well, too. So those are popular. I actually uh I, I own two four units on the same street as well, two four unit buildings. Um and again, because I'm experienced, I kind of know the criteria of what I'm looking for. I got them at the bargain price. And, um, you know, as you become seasoned, you kind of know how to leverage. Um, they had problem tenants. They were out-of-state investors. They didn't have good property manager. So because of that, I got an advantage. Um, I inherited their problem and got it for a bargain deal. I bought a four-unit building for 150000 Okay. Thank you. I did have another question in relation to the funding and financing, right? Like as a Canadian resident, how does a Canadian resident position themselves to get financing on the U.S. side, being that you don't have any established credit? Um, you would think it would be some elaborate um, process, but it really isn't. It really isn't. Um, I would say to start uh, with something as simple as opening a bank account. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that would be the starting process. It's, it's just opening a personal account in the U.S. Um, and are they and asking for income? There. Do they ask for any like income requirements, or it's literally just bring your like? What do you do? I have to be a re like show a U.S. address? Like you get what I'm saying? Uh, or it doesn't matter. Yeah. So honest. when when you're opening an account, they typically ask for a U.S. address. Um. The way I did it, I had some family in the U.S., so I was able to open a joint account. So I opened a joint account. I had my grandparents there, so I just put my grandfather's name on the account with me. I opened up a joint account, and that's how I established my first um, bank account there. They just took my passport as my ID. We already had an uh, account um, with them, and yeah, we went from there. Okay, thank you so much. And then just my last question, because I don't want to be greedy and take up everybody's time. <laughs> no um, but I wanted to know, like, how does the network actually work? Like, are people, do people need to take the initiative and kind of know what they want and how to then, you know, talk to people and say, hey, this is what I'm looking for. If you're looking for that, then let's partner up. Or is there like a pipeline that you create for people within the network? That's a good question. Um. I actually brought a group together. Um, we are kind of like Pomoja as well, um, with like-minded individuals where people are ready to go. Um, and then I connect with another network here in Cleveland as well too, um, with people that are all over the U.S. that are investing here in Cleveland. So they share yeah. resources, um, contacts. You know, if you need somebody to do roofing, drywall, painting, uh, property management, they share all the resources as well too. Um, there's a couple of people in the network here that I partner with and done deals with as well too. So it's, again, it's just like this collaboration of people with the same mindset. Um, and like, um, just like tonight, you know, we're having, uh, this here, this zoom here is another reason for people to like us to gather together, uh, and connect. Um, and this is why the networking is so important. Okay. Well, I would really appreciate if I could, we could all get your contact information in the chat and then, yeah, we can just build a relationship from here. So thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. I'll definitely post it for you. Uh, go for it. Please save this live. I'm tapping in from work. Okay. No problem. Um, I think they're recording as well too, but um, yes, definitely. Like I said, the opportunities are there. Um, and I, Again, we've been screaming across the border. Um, um, my my sister and friend Yvonne um, has taken a trip in herself firsthand across the border. Come came and seen firsthand the opportunities here in Cleveland. I believe the market's gone up much more than when she even came and visited as well. Too, it's gotten even more expensive. So the market's been growing. Um, there's plenty and plenty of opportunity. And again, like I said, from comparing. Apples and oranges, you know, the market in Toronto right now is completely out of whack. Um, and you want to be able to grow something, maybe partner with somebody in your family or in Pomoja or in Principal Evolution um, and grow some wealth. But definitely, definitely some opportunities there. Um, and 
again, we're trying to grow this to a level for our people that are in Jamaica and Africa as well, too. Um, and my resources and contacts so that they can actually do these processes remotely as well, too. Amazing. Uh, Yvonne has a she Yvonne has a question. Uh, what if you you do not have a family in uh, USA? How can you open a bank account there if you don't have family there? Oh, um, there's multiple. There's a few ways I would think. The first would be a U.S. address. There's some mailboxes that you can purchase, like um, as a mailing address, not a PO box, but the mail or services. Um, I would probably try to use that as mm -hmm. a um, as a address. Have some mail that's coming in my name. Um, typically as well too, they use like even utility utility bills, um, with your name on it, something with your name on it. Um, uh, maybe even something as a prepaid phone. You can get with your name on it, and it looks like it's a phone bill that there's that has your name on it as well too. Um, I think that would be another way to 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 get um that done as well too. Um, I I know the the Canadian banks that have you know branches in in the states. Can you do that as well? Like TD Bank, for instance. I know they they uh they're in the states, right? Oh, so, um. They call it uh they have cross border banking. Mm -hmm. Um I I don't use T D particularly because I do multiple states. T D okay. is broadly based on the East Coast. So Florida, oh, New York, Buffalo, mostly East Coast, but when you go Midwest or West Coast, there's no branches out there. And oh, I, okay. I ran into that problem very early. I'm like, I thought these guys were all over, but I use more the national banks like uh, Bank of America, Chase, Citibank. They're in every state. I try to stick to the more known names um, where I, I can find a, um, a branch just about anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a good entry point as well, too. Um, I know RBC is not a true U.S. bank either. Uh, RBC offers, uh, uh, I guess it's an online bank. Um, it's not a true U.S. and some of them as well. They'll tell you, "Oh yeah, we can open up a U.S. bank" because they get the wording confused. But mm. it's really a U.S. Um, uh, um, currency, U.S. Right. currency account. It's not a U.S. account. Oh yeah, I want to open a U.S. account. You go to your bank and you say, "I want to open a U.S. account." They say, "Yeah, sure, no problem." But it's a U.S. currency account. It's not a true United States account. So the easiest way to avoid all of that would be to try to come across and open it up in person, um, make it easier. Do you guys offer these types of services? Yes, we do. Um, PE does offer these services and support. Um, our principal evolution um, page, um, which we should post as well too, on Facebook, and uh, we have a private WhatsApp group. But um, yes, we do offer these types of support. Um, to be honest with you, um, <clears throat> We're just growing into, because of COVID, we were doing a lot of Zoom and online meetings, but we're just flowing into in-person um, and doing these trips. So we want people to have something more tangible, um, like the trip that we're doing. May 25th, we're doing uh, the trip to Cleveland, um, where, like, again, we're doing a full breakdown of how to set everything up, um, how to analyze properties, what to look for, what area codes are cleared, which ones to stay away from, et cetera, et cetera. Great, awesome. Um, you know, there are numerous uh potential partnership opportunities, you know, between uh principal evolution and Pomoja for sure. It's something that you know we have to definitely discuss, um, different investment opportunities and how to kind of uh collaborate on some of those uh opportunities. Uh Ulumide, you have your definitely. Idea. Okay. Oh, thanks, Rick, for at least the, the, the very generous share of information. So I two things that I'm interested in. But the first one is about is the issue of, of credit. Meaning when when a typical US bank looks at your credit profile, I, I would have assumed ignorantly that your credit in Canada 
should you should be able to cross uh, carry over to the US. And that can also be a two-edged sword. If they take if your credit in Canada into consideration, it can also be a liability. But I'm just curious, how does it work? Do they consider your do they see your credit profile in US in Canada when they are assessing you as an individual who is uh, worthy of being a, a extended credit too, or is it you just have to build a US credit from the scratch? That's my first question, and maybe just so you can take them together. My second one is the issue of doing this. I'm, I'm new to any form of real estate investment in the US, and typically I try to mitigate my risk and do things from a, from a position of knowledge. I will not want to do anything individually at this point. I will want to learn the ropes and see if there are people who have traveled that distance that I can align with before going the old hog of doing something privately. So I want to know, does that opportunity exist? And I think I, I can just allude to it, if it's something that can be done with Pamuja, because with Pamuja now, I already have a relationship. I understand the structure. I At least the risk is less compared to going to talk to a different body entirely. So that's just what I would love to say. What's the type of partnership you have with community groups like Pamuja? Thanks. Well, and that's a very good question. So for the credit, um, yes, it would be completely separate from your Canadian. They don't look at anything Canadian um, for your U.S. credit at all. Um, it's not tied to your Canadian, so they're completely two different entities, um, which is beneficial as well, too. And as I was speaking earlier, um, once you finally get your foot in the door and you establish your personal credit, then I would tell you to um, establish your business and your business credit because those two can be separate as well too. So you, while you're establishing personal and business credit and growing both, you have two profiles that you can use and access funding from. And again, it's so much easier to do these things um, in America than it is in Canada um, because uh, the open information in America is, is much different. Um, as far as collaboration, I completely understand, yes, it makes uh, more sense to um, partner um, and, and it helps to mitigate risk. Um, that's how I entered with my my two friends. Um, we, we helped each other. Uh, we went in 50-50 and we've been growing ever since. Um, I'm very familiar with Promojo over the years as well too. And I'm hoping that we can establish something as well too um, so that can help fund more of Promojo's projects that they're doing as well too. Um, they could say that they're in the U.S., Canada, and Africa, and expand, you know. So um, we do um, partnerships, and that's why I said the networking is so important. Um, um, one of our brothers in Principal Evolution, uh, Tunde, he's in Ottawa. Um, he just expanded into a, of a few other markets that we haven't even been into based off the same knowledge he came in and learned as well. I believe he's gone into Chicago and just outside of Chicago as well. Uh, and the same thing with the funding. So yes, definitely we partner, we share your information and resources as well too. Um, and whenever opportunities present, um, again, we always uh, present opportunities. Like I said, our second purchase here in Cleveland, we didn't have all the funding at times or our money was tied up, but we knew it was a really good opportunity. We reached out to the group and said, hey, um, there's a property here selling for 50,000. And five people came together with 10 grand. We bought it. We held it for two and a half years while the tenant was paying eight fifty a month. And two, uh, two and a half years later, we sold it for just shy of double the price of what we bought, sold it for. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Amazing. Um, I would like to explore cash deals, you know, that offer like positive cash flow. Like, you know, one example that you just gave now. Um, the eight, like something like eighty thousand, even hundred and fifty there about, uh, that will be uh, you know, that will provide like passive income, like cash flow, uh, positive cash flow. So if you have some of those listings, <laughs> please uh share them uh with me, and definitely uh you and I can discuss a bit further, and um, you know, I can then present it to you know uh the Pamoja group, the members, and we can come up with the with the share structures and so on, uh to close the deal, because I think it will be beneficial. I think cash deals are better 
because I mean it belongs to the to the group, uh, and we can always liquidate once we uh, yeah. you know, we we need cash or you know we can borrow against it, right? So I I love safe investments. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Borrow money, especially when you're using other people's funds. Uh, you know, like you know, you're trying to mitigate the risk. So it's you know, it's better to uh to just do cash deals. Eventually, I know mm -hmm. as an organization, we'll get to a point where we can start, you know, borrowing and you know, using business credit and some of those things. But right now, I think one of the problems we have within our community. Uh, is we don't we don't own anything, <laughs> you know. We have to depend on others for everything, pretty much. Um, and that that needs to change. We need to we need to start owning uh, properties, investments together, and that's where the power of group economics comes in. That's where Pamoja comes in because the concept of Pamoja is together. You know, the little you have, put it together like you did with your brother. And you can close on deals like that. So uh, if you have listings uh, that are cash deals, please, brother, please, please <laughs> share. And then we, we can um, create a project around it. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, add me, uh, reach out as well, too. Um, I put my uh, contact as well there, too. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I'd love to add you guys to our, our group as well. Um, we're going to start a new Telegram group as well. For those mm. individuals that are interested in more digital real estate, but um, as well, I would say you know if you guys are even doing the entity, I would set up the business as well to promote. Just like how you have it set up in Canada, I would tell you to set it up in the U.S. as well too. Spend a I'm little short amount of money, set up set up your entity. So while you're doing that and you're collecting your cash flow, and the time is passing, now you've established the name and such in the eyes of the business, and then you can start tapping into. The funding and the credit as well too. Amazing, thank you. Amazing, great. You're welcome. I know you guys used to have a WhatsApp group, and I, I was part of the WhatsApp group for uh, for a while. Mm -hmm. And I know, um, you know, my my wife uh, is also part of the group. Do you guys still have that? Yes. I'm not sure. It's it's still yeah, active, the group right? is still running. Yeah. Okay, we share this. We share a lot of resources and stuff. More mm -hmm. of the real estate stuff is on Facebook, but we're mm -hmm. going to start a Telegram. We just it's going to be strictly real estate, and that's what the Telegram is going to be for. Amazing, amazing, awesome! Definitely looking forward to it. I'll connect with Yvonne and get all the details, and then you and I can uh, touch base again. Awesome. No problem. No problem. I thank you guys so much for having me. I wish we had a lot more people, but please share with other people if they if you have the recording. Share it with others. I mean, we want to see our community grow. We want to see our community build. That's the main reason why we do it. You know, we don't like to say, you know, we have something and it's just for me and I don't want to share because it's going to run out. No, there's plenty, plenty for everybody. Amazing. Well said. Thank you, brother. Thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. So, thank you. Can I say one thing before you leave? Sure. Um, again. Thank you so much for being here. But can you talk about the bus trip, the cost, the time, the dates, um, and what do we need to have to uh, to participate in that trip? Yeah, so the bus trip is May 25th. We're uh, leaving in, well, just over a few weeks now, about four or five weeks, May 25th. Um, essentially, we were going to do a bus trip. We just all go on the bus and we were driving across. But a lot of people had asked if they can drive themselves. So we decided, okay, we'll meet everybody in Cleveland. Um, unless you don't have a ride in which we'll situate um some carpooling um if you didn't have a ride. So it was 750 that we are charging for the, the, the trip. Um this includes uh, the whole shebang from A to Z. Um what banks to go to who to tap into credit, how long you need, how to establish your bank score, because the banks have their own score as well too, um, how to get your funding done, and then how to analyze a property. We're going to go hands-on into some of these properties in the city, go around and see and show you, okay, this is what we're looking for. This is what we stay away from. When you see that, that's a red flag. Um, and how to look at your numbers. This is the numbers that you want to fill Because there's opportunities, not only just buying um flat out and renting, but you can buy something for very cheap, put some money and fix it and sell it back and make a profit as well too. There's so many different strategies. So we, we're going through the whole list. Um, 
Mm -hmm. We're spending an entire day of going through from A to Z and sharing all of the knowledge from, like I said, the wealth creation, the wealth preservation. Hopefully, Yvonne we'll can talk about uh, some of the insurance situ situations as well, too. Um, and then we're going through the, the rehab process as well. So, um, seven fifty, May twenty fifth, and now uh, we we'll have a nice group and networking with uh, our mentor down here as well, too. He'll be there talking and sharing with you guys. His mentor, which I met a few years ago, um, I came, um, one of the most humblest multimillionaires I've ever met. You see this guy, he looks like the regular casual person. You'd never know that he's a multimillionaire. Um, but again, he's a regular everyday guy you see, um, and he invested in real estate and how he grew his portfolio. So, uh, any closing thoughts, uh, Yvonne? No, um, the the recording will be shared with our membership, um, uh, with our members. So we hope that those who missed it, um, we I did get a couple of um, sorry I can't make those. They'll be able to hear about it. Um, and we'll share your contact um, if anyone is interested. Uh, and thank you so much. We're looking forward to hearing more about um, all the different investment opportunities that PE has to offer. Um, is there a in-face, uh, in-person uh, game day happening any anytime soon? Um, we're trying to plan one after we do the trip. Um, another networking event as well, too just for the city, for the GTA, bringing all professionals through. But we'll keep you guys posted for sure um, when we're keeping that next event. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Bye. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye, everyone.